Okay, so we've got two minutes on tissue gas, and this is some nasty stuff. Clostridium perfringens exist in your belly at all times. However, when you die, your immune system stops. So those things can go rampant in your body and they reproduce really quickly. They are spore-causing anaerobic bacteria. And so a body that is two hours post-death when they get to your funeral home may look fine. You go back in to involve maybe an hour or two later and they could be into the throes of advanced decomposition where we've got odors and purging and swelling and tissue may have changed to greens and blacks and all sorts of other colors. So a lot can happen in a quick amount of time. To the touch, the, the skin may feel crackly or bubbly because you've got that tissue forming underneath. When the incision is made for the embalming, you may get bubbling of the fluids coming out. Bad stuff. We are always on the lookout for this because we need to attack it quickly and attack it well. And so we use strong fluids, sometimes waterless embalming where we're using straight formaldehyde fluids. We may do compartmentalized embalming where we inject up the head, we do hypodermic injecting. We try and stop that bug as quickly as possible. We also have to treat the brain, which is one of the places that it attacks first. And so we'll use a trocar right up into the brain through the cribriform plate up in the nose to put fluids up there. Bodies that we're always on the lookout even more so for this is somebody who has gangrene or ulcers or has had recent surgery, things of that nature where they were maybe exposed to other bacteria before death. So we're always on the lookout because this is highly contagious. We could pass it from one body to the next, so we have to make sure to sterilize even more in the prep room. So guys, tissue gas, nasty stuff. Talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.